The country of Mexico is pretty well established as a major hub in the modern world, but what we know about Mexico today is very different from what it once was. From the findings of rare dinosaur fossils to an ancient tomb found under a shopping mall, here are 20 shocking things recently discovered in Mexico. Across the sea and underground Shipwrecks are in that sort of strange category where they'll either be recovered quickly after being destroyed or simply left to wander the depths of the ocean until they're stumbled upon by some brave seafarers. That's what happened in this case of an over 200-year-old ship off Mexico's Caribbean coast. The ship is thought to have originally hailed from England around maybe the 18th century, although most of its historical evidence has been lost to the tides of nature by now. But the discovery of this tomb isn't the only thing that has archaeologists surprised. Another finding came to light just after about a 1,700-year-old tomb in Mexico. Archaeologists discovered the skulls and bones of 12 adult men, along with some pre-Columbian figures and statures. These kinds of finds are extremely rare because most of the time someone else has already gotten to them. Whether it's under the water or below the ground, it's unusual for no one else to know about them while still finding anything of value left intact. One of the archaeologists even made a remark about the find, saying that the fact that the tomb was untouched allowed us to have a first approach with the bone remains, to observe the lesions, deformations, and to have more information to know what their way of life was. So, being the first on the scene really is crucial. Maybe we should have someone check out the skies for any lost floating cities next. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Would you climb into the mouth of a giant lizard or back out before anyone could stop you? This drone made an incredible discovery after flying above an island in Mexico. There are actually around a hundred different islands on the Mexican coastline, each with different sizes and sights. But this isn't one you'd see on just any regular day. Although it's more of an islet or a tiny island, this one belonged to a private party that seemed to be having a great time on their own. The drone might have stumbled onto something greater than they expected. But what is it that we're looking at here? It looks like a giant alligator, except the snout is too short. And are those bindings holding it down against its will? The creature looks almost man-made, but also surprisingly detailed the longer you look at it. There are also some attractions based on the characters from the Pixar movie Cars behind it, so maybe this is just a custom-designed inflatable birthday bouncer that might just be too obvious of an answer. For starters, there's nothing to bounce on. Unless you want to try jumping inside the dark pit of the monster's stomach, if you compare the size of the people next to it, you'll realize just how huge it is. So, we're kind of stumped about what it could be or what its use is. So, why don't you guys take a shot at it? Let us know in the comments what you think this is, what it's made of, and what are they actually using it for? Respond below with the hashtag missing topic and we'll figure this out. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The City of Gods The City of Gods may still be eluding adventurers to this day, but the City of Gods has been here in plain sight. Behold, the pre-Hispanic city known as Teotihuacan. It's recognized as the holy city where gods were created and can be found 50 kilometers or just over 30 miles northeast of Mexico City. It was a great Mesoamerican culture at the center of trade, religion, politics, and economics that had influence as far as the distant city of Tikal. In 1987, it was listed in UNESCO's World Heritage List and started bringing in more attention to their former way of life and culture. The city was built way back between the 1st and 7th centuries after the start of the Common Era and is currently most well known for their huge monuments. The pyramids of the sun and the moon are the biggest. The structures have even been laid out on geometric and symbolic principles, providing their advanced ideals way before they were considered savages by foreign invaders. The central road of the city is known as the Avenue of the Dead and connects all of the main buildings with a width of 130 feet and a length of one and a half miles. At the end of it lies the sacred peak of Cerro Gordo at the Inyo Mountains. The language and origin of the original people is still lost to the ruins and artifacts yet to be found. But we know that changes in the culture started with refugees from Cuicuilco, a city destroyed by an active volcano. From there, it's all downhill. 
but maybe eventually we'll know more about their former glory. Temple of Quetzalcoatl. Have you ever heard of a feathered serpent? As weird as it may sound from a modern perspective, the ancient Aztecs might have been onto something with their belief in the Quetzalcoatl. Scientists have argued that dinosaurs might be related to a more feathered species, namely chickens, but if that were the case, a serpent covered in feathers could also be a real plausibility. It would make sense then that this pyramid, also called the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, was such a hot spot for research and archaeological discoveries. It can be found at the southern end of the Avenue of the Dead that we mentioned before. From there, once you deep dive into the core of the temple structure, there's a massive burial pit with the remains of at least 200 warriors and weapons. The majority of them were found with bindings on their arms, meaning they were probably sacrificed to the idea of a powerful god. Although there could be more to that story, the site itself measures in at 32 square miles, or around 83 kilometers, and was originally referred to as the place where men became gods. Only 100,000 people were estimated to have lived in this city, so to see this many sacrificed warriors might seem a bit alarming. Maybe the cultural thrived because their sacrifices were successful, although eventually that came to an end and the pyramid was left in this current state that we see now. Personally, if we had to pick between being ritually sacrificed or visiting a destroyed temple, we'd probably leave things as they are today. Picture this. It might be strange to think of it this way, but perhaps we all take reading and writing for granted. The ancient Egyptians communicated through pictures and symbols that we call hieroglyphics that we were only recently able to translate because of a unique tool called the Rosetta Stone. Likewise, we're able to understand some of what was going on in the ancient areas of the Aztecs because of a commissioned script called the Codex Mendoza. This special book was brought about in the 1540s because of a viceroy of New Spain named Antonio de Mendoza, hence the Mendoza its title. In the simplest way to describe it, the Mendoza Codex is essentially a Mexican illustrated manuscript drawn by indigenous artists that were annotated in Spanish for the Spanish leader at the time, Emperor Charles V of Spain. Although technically the manuscript never actually made it to Spain because French pirates intercepted the ship carrying it and stole the codex to bring back to their own country. Eventually it was then acquired by a cosmographer to King Henry II of France who decided to take some credit of his own on the works of art including the cover page. Fortunately, historians have since been able to solve the mystery of where the detailed script came from and how it ended up where it did, but there's still a bit more we could probably learn from these old pictures. The Great Skull Rack If Halloween season is your favorite time of the year, you'll probably get so used to seeing abandoned skull heads that you forget they were supposed to have belonged to a living body. The skull rack of the Great Temple might do a good job of reminding you though, it was once known as Zompantli to the former Aztecs, and it was only recently uncovered, hidden in Mexico City. This newly found section had 119 human skulls, bringing the final number of skulls and the whole structure to over 600. The original purpose of this crazy rack served three simple yet distinct reasons for existing that probably wouldn't fly over well in our modern society. For several of these Mesoamerican civilizations, it's believed they were meant to honor the local gods likely as the leftovers for ritual sacrifices. They were also a type of public display so that anyone who wanted to remember or honor their sacrifice could still look upon their remnants like a morbid version of a cemetery or memorial wall. And finally, the skull racks were supposed to showcase the power and military might of the area's empire. Apparently, a display case of your own dead civilians is pretty intimidating to enemies and allies alike. Supposedly, archaeologists from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History believe that there are actually seven other relics like this one that once existed in Aztec culture. They also say that the Mesoamericans of the time viewed their sacrifices as a way of keeping the gods alive and not letting our known universe be destroyed. Hopefully, they weren't right because it's been a while since the rack has been updated. Maze of the Mayans Corn is pretty popular. Well, that might be a bit of an understatement considering how many foods and cultures rely on corn as a staple food source, like with cornbread or corn on the cob, or what have you, but the Mayans seem to know how to appreciate these clusters of kernels. For the various Mesoamericans of the time, the maize god was considered to be a fan favorite deity, especially in the golden age of the Mayan empire, also known as the classic period. 
Sources have pointed out that the earliest representation of this god of corn appeared in early classic Maya and was later known as the tonsured maize god. The images that depict their savior were almost always of a young man with a type of stylized maize on the top of his rather long head. His own being was meant to represent mature and fertile maize, which was obviously a crucial part of the civilization's culture. This particular limestone statue of the Mayan maize god was found in Copan, Honduras and was likely built in 715 CE. It was one of eight statues commissioned by the 13th ruler of Copan, a man who sometimes went on by the nickname of 18 Rabbit. What's interesting to note, however, is that the Mayans didn't seem to use any metal instruments for any of their construction projects. So instead, they used tools made out of flint, obsidian, granite, jade, and quasite. So these stone statues are fairly unique in that regard. Limitations breed creativity, as they say, the girth of a Mexican tree. In some cases, bigger really is better. Just look at this big fellow who was designated as the National Tree of Mexico, also known as the Tree of Tule, or Arbol de Tule. It was first given its official title in 1921, but later confirmed on the records as a national tree in 1924. You can find it in a church courtyard within the town of Santa Maria del Tule, which is where the tree gets its root name. It's a type of evergreen, which stems from the term meaning water drum or old water. Trees like these were an important part of pre-Hispanic Mexican culture that prepared their different parts for medical uses and functions. The bark, for example, was an astringent meant to clear up burns, scars, and skin ulcers. The resin, leaves, buds, stems, and even the fruit and bark were also vital for all sorts of common conditions that we take for granted today. Even the wood was a great tool for construction. Consider the wood was highly resistant to rot perfect for building a canoe or some other outdoor furniture projects. The tree in particular has yet to be torn down, but has served as an amazing landmark throughout its 1400 years of experience. The measurement of its circumference is around 42 meters, or at least 30 people holding hands in a circle. But what's really impressive is that it has that much girth while only reaching up to 116 feet, especially when compared to the tall oak, redwood, and sequoias over in California and supposedly it's still growing. Vacation Destination If you need a break from your stressful day-to-day -day routine, why not stop by Chiapas? It's one of the 32 federal entities of Mexico with a gorgeous mountain range and lush rainforests. The capital of this southern Mexican state is also the largest city in the area called Tuxtla. In the distance, the Lancondin jungle can be reached and has had a major effect on our planet through oxygenation meaning it delivers more oxygen to the rest of us than most other plants. The jungle is also a major host to hundreds of diverse species, including butterflies, reptiles, plants and mammals that can still be seen in their natural habitats. Off the coastline from the Pacific Ocean are the Mayan ruins and an incredibly gorgeous view. The area is known as the largest conglomeration of indigenous populations in the country, with at least a quarter of the citizens speaking Mayan dialects, but above all else, it would seem that the best thing to visit in Chiapas would be the Rainbow Falls. The crystal blue lake, as well as the careening waterfalls that lead into it, are a sight worth the trip alone. If you're looking to make your own discoveries in Mexico, then this should definitely be on your list. The Mexican Dinosaurs An unknown dinosaur was recently identified by Mexican paleontologists in the northern state of Mexico's Coahuila. The investigators on the scene said that they believe this dinosaur breed to have been very communicative through low-frequency sounds to talk to each other. Having discovered the new species, the finders of these bones named the creature Tetalophus galorum and assumed that it died around 72 million years ago. The name in their indigenous language means word crest. One of the paleobiologists said, we believe that these dinosaurs, like modern birds, saw in color and so these structures like the crest were possibly brightly colored. They could have been completely red or multicolored with spots. Others have also said that it looks extremely fortunate conditions for the remains to be found as well preserved as they've been. It also showed that the area was once tropical, meaning that it has vastly changed since the prehistoric era. The first step in the discovery was finding the tail, then most of the creature's skull. It may be a bit of a stretch to connect the two pieces so quickly, but since the vicinity was close enough, 
It made sense to try and connect the two with whatever other pieces they came across. The discovery was still being investigated, but the paleontologists in charge predicted the full creature to be around 12 meters because of the 6-meter tail. We look definitely forward to seeing the final result. World's Tiniest Frogs If you thought that the frog species only consisted of the green ones you see on TV, you're sure to be surprised that there are at least 6,000 variations of these little guys, and they come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. But we're going to be adding six more to that list with these miniature frogs that were recently discovered in some Mexican forests. But when we say mini, we really mean it. Some of these guys are tiny enough that they can fit on a silver dollar with enough extra leg room to really stretch out. These new species are actually among the smallest frogs in the world, which probably is why they've been so elusive in their discovery. Most of them are no bigger than a half inch, or about 15 millimeters. One of the researchers at the University of Cambridge, Tom Jamison, said about the discovery, These frogs live in the dark, humid leaf litter of the forest, and we don't really know anything about what goes on there. We don't understand their behavior, how they socialize, or how they breed. The six amphibians are mostly found in pine oak forests, although they're not widespread across the country. The only known place that they've been seen so far is the Sierra Madre del Sur region in southern Mexico. The frogs have been categorized in the Krogastor genus and have been labeled as direct developing frogs, essentially meaning that they skip the entire tadpole phase and come out of their eggs as fully functioning adults. It would be pretty impressive if they had even a smaller phase of growth before they became their natural tiny selves. But it seems that growing just isn't in their cards. The Aquatic Caves Plenty of people are brave enough to explore your typical above-ground caves, but how many could stomach the idea of a diving down to see what's in an underwater cave? The Yucatan Peninsula is filled with these types of underwater caves, called cenotes, and what's more, they're fresh water. You can literally just hold your breath and take a look down to see the mystery right in front of you. But we recommend full diving gear if you want the safest experience. Of the 3,000 registered cenotes, their only entry points are accessible through limestone sinkholes. They're a naturally made wonder that connects to other aquatic cave systems that can be explored for lengths of up to 60 miles or 100 kilometers, possibly even more. So far, only 1,400 of them have actually been fully investigated, so it's difficult to know their full extent or what mysteries lie in waiting for the other 1,600. There might be even more on the other side of the ones that have been properly checked out yet. Just two of these connected cenotes have already broken a world record in mileage alone, while also teaching us more about the Mayans that once lived near them. It turns out that Mayan culture constructed their cities based on the network of caves in the area, which boils down to the fact that many of these hidden troves are truly full of archaeological treasures. Some of them were even part of the religion and used as worshipping grounds to various gods of the time. So if you want to be one of the first to get your hands on some ancient Mayan artifacts, you better sharpen up your swimming skills. The Great Olmec If hearing the name Olmec makes you think of a large stone head with bold and wide features, you'd be pretty spot on. These twin pieces of Olmec reliefs were discovered by archaeologists in Mexico, just chiseled into their circular stones. They were found in a town near Mexico's southern tip. Researchers believe that the statue heads are actually the previous rulers of the ancient Olmec civilization and that their names come from the Aztec world Olmecato, meaning rubber people. The Olmec people, who may or may not have been rubbery, lived along Mexico's Gulf Coast and thrived for almost a full millennium roughly between 1200 and 400 BC. Although today we mostly think of them as providing these giant-headed statues, their culture actually had a lot of influence over what would later become the Aztec and Mayan civilizations. The Olmec history goes so far back that archaeologists still don't know what their original river city was named and have simply opted to call it San Lorenzo. But what they do know is that this mystery city was the largest and most successful city throughout the region of the time. They're even considered one of six pristine civilizations that developed all on their own without migration or influence from outside cultures. So, in a way, they're the original precursors to most concepts that have long been established by the modern era. There's still a good number of mysteries surrounding the people, their ways, and what these giant head carvings were meant for, but it will probably take a good while before we get to learn anything else about them. Until then, we can at least appreciate their classic aesthetic. 
Mayan Tulum. The Mayans had a pretty decent run for as long as they did. We know that there was an early or classic Mayan period and then the later post-classic period that defined their culture into separate eras. But just 80 miles south of Cancun is where the ruins of a classic Mayan city, Tulum, can still be found today. The earliest known dated piece of culture in Tulum comes from 564 AD in the form of a stone stella inscription. So, we can clearly place the city in the prime of classic Maya, but it also ran through the post-classic era between 1200 and 1521 AD. The site was very clearly an important trade post for the inhabitants seeing as it controlled both river and land routes that converged at the city's base. There's been a decent amount of important findings in the area, from copper rattles to rings and jade pieces, meaning that many supplies were exported through these routes. But once the Spanish armies muscled in, the Tulum population hit a huge crash while new diseases were on the rise. Even through all of that, they still relied on their ceremonial center and continued to stick to their traditions. The word Tulum actually came from the Mayan language, meaning wall, trench, or fence. But the ancient name for the city was Zama, meaning dawn or sunrise. The title is pretty accurate in both languages, seeing as how the city was surrounded by fortified walls, yet still faced the rising sun. Today, it's still a well-visited site and even a hub for celebrity vacations. We wonder how the Mayans would feel about that. Tomb Beneath the Mall You never know what you'll find in some of the most bizarre places, but chances are that you won't be as lucky as these archaeologists who found a temple below a demolished market in a mall plaza. It was later discovered that the temple was the only surviving piece of history dedicated to the Aztec wind god Ihecto. It was built over 650 years ago onto a circular platform that reaches about 36 feet in diameter or almost 11 meters and 4 feet tall or just over a single meter. The intention of these researchers is to unveil the site to the public, but they definitely want to be sure they've uncovered everything of historical value first. The National Archaeology Coordinator for Mexico's National Anthropology and History Institute, Pedro Francisco Sanchez Nava, said that what they found was very expected of the hidden tomb, mostly just shards of pottery and human remains. But even further down was something much more unexpected, and that was another temple. The findings there, however, were a bit more unsettling, including an infant offering, bird bones, ceramic figures of monkeys, and traces of obsidian. Both temples are hidden under the large ceremonial site in the capital, although you wouldn't recognize it today as anything other than an urban jungle. In fact, modern-day Mexico City actually covers several pre-Hispanic sites, including this one. The two ancient areas were once rivals long ago before the foreign invasion wiped out both of their cultures, leaving much of their culture behind in the rubble. At least now, there's no one to get in the way of digging it all back up. Tool Time the ancient architects didn't have the advantage of owning a toolbox or having a local store to stop at for supplies, so they had to figure out construction solutions all on their own. But in those days, technically, they were inventions. One new study that comes from Kent's School of Anthropology and Conservation discovered that a commonly known stone tool technology might have actually come about tens of thousands of years before the age where they were more commonly known. The Oldowan and Acheulean stone tool technologies are currently the oldest and most well-documented tool technologies known to historians. With the new study, however, the Oldowan stone tools might have actually come about for the first time over two and a half million years ago, around 36,000 to 63,000 years before the most currently known evidence. Likewise, the Oshulawan's origin was also off by around 55,000 years or so and have been placed in the 1.8 million year old range. So, who exactly discovered these tool making technologies and why did it take so long to uncover them? Right now, Kent School has only crafted a model that came up with a year range. But we do know that while Europeans moved on to the age of steel and metal, the Americas remained attached to stones all the way until eastward ships arrived and brought their culture and some other major changes along with them. Flower Power Coca plantations are not necessarily a good thing to investigate, but they do have a strong connection to multiple South American cultures that eventually find their way across the world. Coca is a flower that's vital for making the highly valued and very illegal drug of cocaine, but it was only possible to grow outside of Mexico. Now, there might be evidence of some coca plantations within Mexico, and it's causing quite a bit of stir. 
With the government seizure of 1,639 coca plants in the country came the first known case of raw coca being cultivated. It's no mystery that Mexico is the heart of illegal trades and cartel drug deals, but it was originally thought to only be where the middlemen lived, and their supplies had come from further south of the border. With this new evidence of local plantations, there could be a major change in the dependence of other countries for their underground deals. A Mexican representative of the United Nations, Antonio Mazzatelli, says that this discovery is actually pretty troubling. He thinks it could amount to a small-scale experiment to see if they can cultivate their own coca, which might lead to a dramatic increase in drug deals at cheaper prices. Soldiers were sent to the town of Tuxtla Chico, where they found the worrisome stash near the border of Guatemala and Chiapas. Hopefully, the find turns out to be a one-time kind of deal, but the evidence says it may be unlikely. Settling in Laredo Deep in the middle of Baja California Sur is one of the first known Spanish colonial settlements in Mexico, the island of Laredo. It was founded in 1697 as a part of New Spain because of its huge bounty of sea life along the coast of the Sea of Cortez. But before the arrival of the Spanish armies, the original locals proved their existence through cave paintings. These civilizations were believed to have lived in the location between 1000 BC and 1300 AD, which is quite a solid amount of time to develop a culture. The dry climate of the mountains have had a positive effect on preserving the paintings, allowing us to get a better understanding than we would in most other ancient locations. In the 1500s, the Spanish leader Cortes tried and failed to start a colony in the area of La Paz, but then continued to fail for another hundred years. Most of these attempts were foiled by the natives refusing to give in, as well as the Spanish invaders not being able to adapt to the harsh desert climate. Today, things are a bit different, but the natural beauty of the location hasn't changed all that much. Sports fishing is one of the biggest attractions for tourism, although the mission is still around to provide religious services to those in need or want. But one of the bigger attractions is whale watching, with plenty of tour guides willing and ready to find the best spots for tourists to get up close and personal with the humongous creatures. It's actually one of the few places where you can comfortably watch the migration of blue whales, so that alone could be worth the trip. Flying Fossils Most species of reptiles are at their comfiest with their feet planted firmly on the ground, but some fossils tell a different story, especially with the discovery of a flying creature in Coahuila. This find was founded by Mexican, British, and German scientists that discovered foot bone fossils of a pterosauria. The remains of these flying reptiles were believed to have once soared over the Sahara Desert, but have somehow managed to wind up near the Mexican borders. In total, there were three new species of pterosaurs in the vicinity, and they all are thought to be in the ballpark of over 100 million years old. The landscape was a very different place back then and likely full of life that could never survive there today. The species in question, the pterosaurs, were the first winged vertebrates that lived in the Cretaceous period. The wingspan could reach up to 13 feet or 4 meters and had the ability to grab prey mid-flight with a set of spiked teeth. Unfortunately, they were all wiped out around 65 million years ago. These are the first fossils of their kind to be found in this region. But because of the different distances between continents back then versus today, it's possible that flight could have gone a lot further and a lot faster than what would be possible now. The fossils can be found at the Paleontology Museum in Coahuila. Dragon Discovery Maybe all of the fairy tales of dragons have been considered fantasy because we've been looking in the wrong places. This man found the corpse of a dead dragon on a remote island, according to a 2016 viral video that was shared across social media. The island itself wasn't confirmed, but last we checked, don't dragons like to live in European-style towers and castles? Rumors have it that the tropical dragon might have fallen from high in the sky above Tibet and China, but others think they were really discovered by a scientist in Spain as well. Well, there are some that assume Saudi Arabia is the true origin. For a medieval creature that no one thinks is real, there sure are a lot of places their bones could be hiding. Many viewers had their doubts but many more also thought the details were too realistic to be faked. They theorized that the dragon was actually from another world that crash-landed on an island in Mexico. Could that be the origin of our missing topic? It's unlikely. 
this creature has a lot of inconsistencies that just don't add up to the facts. For one, the body looks a bit warped and detached from itself in various spots, although maybe you could argue that their biology is simply too unknown for us to comprehend. But if this news can air on TV without any questions, why haven't other stations picked it up? The truth is that the channel that aired the show, called Quarta Millennio, which translates to fourth millennium in English, admitted to preparing a model dragon in place of a real one. They even released a video describing how they did it. Two of a kind. Two heads might be better than one, but when it's on the same body, it could be considered a crowd. These twins conjoined whales were discovered on the Baja California Peninsula in Mexico by some fishermen who definitely did not expect the unexpected that day. The species of gray whales were caught alive as just infant calves but died not too long after their birth. It is especially common for most conjoined creatures to have a shorter lifespan. The situation is especially harsh in the wild because of their unique situation and lack of accommodations. A marine biologist named Benito Bermudez said that the whales were discovered alive in the Ojo de Lebra Lagoon but only survived for a few hours. They were connected at the waist with two full-sized heads and matching tail fins. While some cases of conjoined whales have been studied in the past, this was the first case of gray whales, so the local research and science teams jumped at the chance to investigate the unfortunate carcass. Scientists gathered various samples of skin, muscle, and baleen, a type of filter feeder system, to help along with their newfound research purposes. Maybe some good will come out of it. Mexico might have a lot of different reputations, whether it's for their beautiful landscapes, their fascinating historical developments, or maybe some more controversial topics that we've already discussed. But they should be known for their amazing discoveries as well. Who knows what else lies in the mysterious country of ancient civilizations and modern wonders? But we plan to find out. Hmm.